AMD has finally killed its Raptor and Gaming Evolved integration, the encumbrant utility that dismayed us on a number of occasions. Today, with the AMD Relive update to the Crimson brand drivers, AMD has implemented its own solution to software capture for gameplay and retroactive gameplay capture. This is a direct competitor to the Shadowplay software from NVIDIA's GeForce Experience Suite and performs many of the same functions and has the same end objective. Years ago, we did this comparison with Shadowplay versus Fraps versus GVR, which is AMD's previous utility before it was subsumed by Raptor and the Gaming Evolved platform. And we're back now that there's a new tool. Again, Relive under AMD's latest Crimson brand update. And this tool we have side-by-side -side comparisons for. We've also got some benchmarks of the frame rate impact from doing live capture with Shadowplay and with the new Relive tool. And then finally, we have some storage capacity requirement benchmarks between the two to look at the per minute data consumption of each software solution. And these announcements for today contain a whole lot more than just the Relive update, but that's all we're focusing on here because really it deserves the most direct focus. Check back tomorrow for more analysis and discussion of OCAT, the overlay and benchmarking tool that couples with Presentmon, and for discussion on other tools within the AMD suite, like an update to the Chill platform. But again, today's focus is on Relive. Let's start with a walkthrough of the interface. It should be immediately apparent that the utility is in fact capable of desktop capture. AMD is using an overlay similar to Shadowplay for capture of screenshots and video, relying on even the very same hotkey that Shadowplay uses, Alt-Z by default, though that's changeable. The hotkey pops up the overlay through which you can easily modify capture settings, toggle capture without a hotkey, or begin retroactive gameplay capture and broadcast. And the Relive solution plugs into Twitch directly as well, so that offers customizable streaming settings for the platform onto which you may be streaming your gameplay. In many ways, this is similar to Shadowplay, identical really, and we've highlighted a few of the key differences between the quality settings and other options in the interface in this quick table. Maximum supported bitrate is where we're starting. This was checked using an RX 480 Gaming X for the Relive option, and Shadowplay was checked with a GTX 1060 Gaming X because we figured those cards would be the best for creating scenarios where we'll later see any potential performance loss and better represent the current end user market. With Shadowplay, we're able to output a level of quality that rapidly enters into sort of placebo territory, maxing out at 130 megabit per second data rates. And again, that is limited primarily by your upload platform like YouTube. GFE used to be limited to around 50 megabits per second, depending on how you configured it previously, but that's been expanded. Relive seems to max out at about 50 megabits per second again, and that's at least with this card, the RX 480. It uses similar low, medium, high quality presets to Shadowplay, but with different tuning for the bitrate. And for convenience, we've listed the data rate for each preset in this table for each device or software, though it's not an indicator of which is better, just a preset. Encoders for Relive can be switched between AVC and HEVC, while NVIDIA uses its own encoding solution. Both Relive and Shadowplay are hardware accelerated encoders with designated GPU components responsible for handling all of that encoding on the card. This moves the workload off of the CPU and is something that was really emphasized in our original video on Shadowplay because it's critical to performance and retaining that performance while capturing video. Moving down the list, we've got a default audio bitrate of about 184 kilobits per second when captured with Shadowplay without options for customization. So that's a fixed data rate and it was inspected when we looked at the files. AMD gets points here as the tool allows customization of bit rates up to 320 kilobits per second for the audio. There's minimal delta between the higher bitrate audio captures when using Relive in terms of the file size, so running with higher audio bitrate isn't really going to impact your performance in an exponentially negative fashion. Both tools enable custom audio input device selection and choice between push-to-talk or always-on microphones and in-game audio recording. And as a few interesting side points, Relive has multiple overlay options when recording, so one of them is overlaying your own image on the captured screen or game or whatever, and that could be something like a watermark. So this is a pretty simple feature that I'm actually happy to see as content creators, because this means if you were a gaming channel and you wanted zero editing involved in terms of post-process, stuff like that, and you just want to record your game and upload it, this will allow you to still watermark that footage to make sure you've got your branding on there and that it's not easily lifted. So that's added in Relive, and they've also got an overlay that's just kind of interesting, but not necessarily that functional. And in the bottom right or whatever corner you select, 
there's a little slide out when you start recording that lists the system information. So that'd be the CPU and the GPU basically, if you wanted that present in your video. So it's not quite as advanced as something like XSplit or OBS, but it's also not trying to be. For example, there's no way to do scenes or overlay in multiple of your own images and graphics with Relive or with Shadowplay. It's pretty basic. You've basically got webcam overlays and then the other options that I just listed. Let's get into the benchmarks between the two. First, here's a side-by-side -side capture comparison of an identically executed benchmark scenario. Both captures were at 50 megabits per second, despite being able to go higher on Shadowplay, and they had roughly the same audio bitrate, though Shadowplay was slightly lower. Video playback basically looks the same. It's really up to you to compare that, though, and granted, YouTube will compress this a bit, but it should look about the same because they're both using hardware encoders and they're both capturing at the same bitrate. When we look at the file size comparison per minute of the capture, this chart is what we end up with. For reference, our old data from Fraps Benchmarking is also present here, since that software hasn't changed in years or even been updated. And we're looking at file sizes of nearly five gigabytes with Fraps for one minute of recording, or about 4,700 megabytes, which records effectively losslessly and without GPU acceleration. That's a bit rate somewhere in the range of 638 megabits per second, way into placebo territory, and that's assuming no compression plays, which with Fraps, there probably are none. Shadowplay, the newest version anyway, is capturing at about 366 megabytes for the entire one minute run, and Relive is capturing at about 376 megabytes for the same pass. That's a 10 megabyte difference. And this is a repeated benchmark, so we know that the data is about the same for each pass, though we do have a slight bitrate difference in audio that we can't control for. Regardless, Relive and Shadowplay are effectively identical in storage requirements and shouldn't really be a heavy point between the two of them. Next, we'll be looking at the impact on gaming performance when using either Shadowplay or Relive. This is to say an analysis of the frame rate loss when using either tool because the way these work, you're inherently going to have some loss. Now, that could be I.O. bound, it could be in the software side, it could be GPU or CPU bound, it really depends on the solution you're using. With Fraps, given that bitrate, obviously you run into a storage bottleneck pretty quickly. It's way faster than what most hard drives can reasonably handle. And then Fraps also doesn't really do GPU acceleration, at least not like these do, where you're relying on individual custom designed encoders on either AMD hardware or NVIDIA hardware to perform your encoding of the live captured video. So both of those solutions for these two cards natively will be far better than what something like Fraps can do, but OBS, things like that, do have integrations with encoders that work with hardware. We're just not looking at them today. So as stated, the full testing methodology is defined for this in the article below. If you're curious about what hardware was used or how we tested a particular game or captured the gameplay. Starting with Dirt Rally at 1440p with ultra settings using an RX 480 Gaming X for AMD or GTX 1060 Gaming X for Nvidia, these are the results we're seeing. Note first that this is all relative performance scaling since raw FPS means nothing to us given the difference in video cards used for testing. The GTX 1060 using Shadowplay is losing approximately 10.9% of its performance with Dirt Rally when capturing gameplay and that means it's moving from 98 FPS average to 87.3 FPS average and with comparably reduced 1% and 0.1% lows. The RX 480 using Relive is losing approximately 3.9% of its performance with the game and the same capture settings, or a shift from about 86.7 to 83.3 FPS average. And note here that the performance on NVIDIA with Shadowplay is a bit worse than what we see in other games. For example, moving on to GTA 5, we see that Shadowplay is now performing better than Relive, and also obviously better than it did in Dirt. This is certainly something we saw previously in our last set of tests with Fraps and GBR, and in those tests, GBR was doing worse in some games than in others, and a lot of that varies based on how a particular game interacts with the overlay provided by the vendor, so it's not necessarily a hardware level thing. Anyway, the performance differences peg Shadowplay and the GTX 1060 at a performance loss of 3.32%, moving from 99.3 to 96 FPS average, basically negligible, and the RX 480 with Relive loses 3.65% of its performance, a move from 90.3 to 87 FPS average. And this is all really good news. It didn't used to be the case that you could use these hardware accelerated software solutions for recording desktop or gameplay footage, and you had to rely on things like Fraps, which was either, well, both, CPU intensive and storage intensive in ways that would have your frame rate sometimes depending on what hardware you had underlying. So that is 
where we're moving and where we've been moving for a while. It's all going towards GPU acceleration. It makes a lot of sense. That's what these are built for. And they have individual components, as I said, for the encoding process of the video. So you do always lose some performance. That's the nature of this. It's just a matter of how bad it is. And with both of these tools, it's really negligible. It's not that bad at all. Now, Dirt was an interesting scenario where we saw worse performance with the 1060 and Shadowplay but that's not reflected in every game. And the same will be true for this if we expand its test scenarios. Again, it depends on how the software, the game, interacts with the overlay. The biggest takeaway here is that where Shadowplay was already really good at what it does, AMD now has a competitor in the form of Relive. So you don't need to rely on third-party solutions like OBS and XSplit to get the same functionality that NVIDIA offers natively. Now, both vendors offer native gameplay and desktop capture solutions. Again, a good thing, and both of the tools are low overhead, so you're not losing too many frames. Again, Dirt Rally, a bit of an outlier here, uh, but not losing a lot of frames either way. And then in terms of storage, you're not really consuming much of that either. 300 something megabytes or less in some cases, depending on what you're capturing. For about a minute of footage, really not something to complain about, especially when we look at where we came from, which would be Fraps at four gigabytes per minute. Uh, so that's good news overall. The compression is good and not that lossy. You obviously lose some of the data, you always do, or I should say you lose some of the quality of that data, but it's not bad and YouTube will compress it more anyway. So if that's your end goal, who cares? Uh, both perform well, they produce about the same visual quality. Now it's just no longer really a point of comparison if you're Considering buying a card, that's something you can mark off the list because they both have a solution that's similar. So we're happy that AMD finally has its own software solution for this task because that was kind of a driving reason to get an NVIDIA card if you wanted really easy to use software capture for whatever you're doing. Uh, and now they're level on that playing field. And in the future, we'll be looking at OCAT, which is basically an interface that AMD built for the open source Presentmon project, which is what we use for DX12 and Vulkan testing. It's an important thing to have, but it's not easy to use. It's all command line driven. So we'll talk about that probably tomorrow. Subscribe for that content. Links in the description below for more on this particular content as always. And I'll see you all next time.